There are three kinds of birth. The best that can happen to any man is to experience the entire thing. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 5 in Amplified. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 5. It says the fool falls his hands together and consumes his own flesh. That is, it destroys itself by indolence. The fool folds his hands together and consumes his own flesh, destroying itself by idleness and apathy. The New Living Testament says, Fools fold their idle hands, leading them to ruin. Hello? Hey. Your future is not in the hands of God. Your future is in your hand. The future had left. God created the future. And he handed it over to you. If you refuse to make it happen, you cannot blame God. I give you an example. You are expectant. Right? You are married, you are expecting children. You know the ovulation period of your wife? And that is the time you choose to fight her. And then there are issues, one issue or the other. Or maybe there is a journey for you to make. And you expect the pregnancy to come. Are you expecting another child of the Holy Spirit? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That is the way some of us are as Christians. The future you are expecting had already been created. That future is secured. That future is possible. That future is available. If you don't work it out, it will not happen. Wisdom demands that seeing the traces and patterns of lack, a lack lustered life of your progenitors, of your mother, of your father, of your brothers and your sisters. And then seeing this, raising his ugly head in your life again, wisdom demands that you rise not only to challenge it, but to get it eradicated. Eradicated, beginning from you. Otherwise, you will hand the same thing down that is handed over to you to generations that are imagined from you. Am I communicating, please? I've said it a number of times. Let me repeat it again. Not for want of what to say, but to re-echo it so that it will make meaning to you, look at your father very well. What you don't like in that father, say it to yourself that it will not happen to you. And you work it out. Look at your mother very well. And what you can see that is not, ah, Baba Yokoni Dangote. Dangote is the father of somebody. Somebody shout hallelujah. Eternalize is the father of somebody. Yes, now, fortunately, you have not come from a father like Dangote and Otterola. That is an opportunity for you to break the record. To be the record. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I tell you what I mean. If you get to see the child of Dangote driving a kind of car or living a kind of life, you are not going to see it as a big deal because as far as you are concerned, well, he's just a tenor child. He's just Dangote's child. His father broke the record. There's nothing that the children of Abiola can do today that will make meaning to us. Why? We will say that his father helped him. He inherited this. But in the case of you that has nothing to, that have nothing to inherit, then whatsoever you do is a record breaking. 
That is the opportunity you have. Hello? Don't sleep this night until God has revealed to you what you should do to make that future happen. You sleep too much. The one you have been sleeping all the while has landed you nowhere. Evil patterns. Listen to me. Oh. Evil patterns don't have records of self-eradication. Where we like, is a fools hold for their idle hands, leading them to a ruin. A ruin. If you see the evil patterns and you do nothing about it, the Bible says that you are not wise. I didn't say you are a fool. Though. I just said that the Bible said you are not what? So you know the best name, you know the best description. No be me talking. Have I called anybody fools? No. <laughs> I only said that you are not wise. So you cannot afford to keep your mouth shut. You cannot afford to allow yourself get accustomed to all those things that are negative. Cannot afford. I said, when it is God's time, it will make things work. He has already made things work. You, what are you making to work? Evil patterns don't have records of self-eradication. But it has records of firm establishment in perpetuity as long as it is allowed to your father allowed it, that is why it stayed. Your mother allowed it, that is why it stayed. So you can get it eradicated from your own level. Otherwise, evil patterns, when it is set in motion, takes root. And the longer it stays, the more difficult it becomes to get uprooted again. And that is why it is commonly said in Yoruba that it is when Iroko tree is still very young that, that you can afford to cut off its branches. Otherwise, when Iroko tree is fully grown, how do you cut off the branches? You have no choice than to begin to take salt and pepper there and do sacrifice. One musician sang it is dead now. Atike kere latin shekini kon iroko. Toba da baton. Ebo niyo mandao. Hello. Ma jeki poverty debola ye. You don't get it. Why must penury become a, a, an ebo? Becomes a God that you continue to serve. Your father served it. Your, your grandfather served it. Hello? You must break it. And it has to break. Oh. If you are not ready to break it, don't come to our church again. Hello? If you begin to trace how, how firmly rooted poverty can be, it can last for a year, and from there it can last to decades. From decades it can last to generations, and from generations it can become ages. Therefore, I speak by the Spirit of the Lord. If your amen can come from within you, and if your, if your faith is attached to this, that that negative situation that has become ageless in your generation, in this service, they break away from you. In the name of Jesus, I said they break away from you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, so if you cannot stand your ground to fight it out and become different in your lineage, your children will find it more difficult to withstand the challenges ahead. 
particularly in this our jet age. Hello? For goodness sake, the children of some people are the managing director. We are as the children of some people are their drivers. What shape of parents are we in? The children of some people are the managing directors. And then those security guards. And you need to see them when the managing director is coming. What about the cleaner? Ah! Somebody will go and poop in a toilet. And then somebody will now be the one that will carry the air fresher. Air fresh and go and put it. And some people are so indisciplined. And then they will poopoo and forget about it. You know what they say in my village? The person that poopoo will always forget. The person that clear it will never forget. Takao Shidano. Have you seen those Chinese on the construction site? They don't do anything, they look neat. They only stand and they are looking. And Nigerians are there. Them as laborers. Hello? If you cannot stand your ground now and fight it out, your children will find it harder to fight. So make life easier for your children. Fight it out. Say, I hear. I hear. See, if you do not fight it out, there is every probability that your children will not be able to compete with their mates. So it's in your hand. Why you need to work now is not for your sake alone. It's for the sake of generations that are emerging from you. If your father didn't realize that, and you too fail to realize that, well, I was. Listen, carving out a destiny, ensuring a life pattern for yourself, different from what you meant on ground, is not going to be an easy task. You have to reborn yourself. You were born poor. There is no sin in that. But there is sin in you dying poor. And if you fail to reborn yourself, you will die poor. May that not be your portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now there are three kinds of births. Three kinds. The first is biological birth. That is you were born by your parents. The second is the spiritual birth. That is when you acquire the life of God. And the third is what I term self-rebirth. You are giving birth to yourself. You are giving birth to yourself. Now, listen, you are not nullifying the first. In other words, you are not rejecting your father. You are not rejecting your mother. She remains your father. She remains, he remains your father. He, she, he remains your father. She remains your mother. You are not looking down on them. As a matter of fact, you are not putting any blame on them. And then you get born again. Acquiring the life of Christ. Is it Christ that will now help you to live the life? So it is not the spiritual birth that you have acquired that will make you. It is what you have chosen to do with the spiritual birth. There are some of us, we know about what Jesus did, what he has concluded, but we do nothing about it. And so that is how we are, who we are. And that is why we are where we are. Now, giving birth to yourself is what you are means what you are able to make with your biological bath and your spiritual bath. So 
So you can be born again and be limited in life. If you fail to live on the reality of that birth, that's the gospel truth. Now listen to me. If your life stops at biological birth, you will live a trial by error life. If you stop at spiritual birth, you are sure of making heaven when you die. But here in the earth, you can struggle. Huh? Become miserable. Ah, at a time, sir, you will be expecting the death to come. At whatever age, a man that is enjoying life does not expect death. I was speaking with an 80-year-old man. I was at his 80th birthday. He now had cancer. And I said, Baba, is it not better for you to die? Is it having cancer? He looked at me very well. He didn't know what to tell me. You could see in him that he didn't want to die. Why? It was because he had what he is living for. Hello? The fact that in the long run all of us will die does not mean that living is vanity. People read the scriptures, they don't understand it. They come to say that Solomon says vanity upon vanity and then vexation of the spirit. Hello? My life is not vanity. If I lived in 120, it is never going to be vanity. Hello? Today, Baba Deboye is close to 80. Is his life vanity? No. Baba Kumuyi had already separated 80. Is his life vanity? No. Can somebody, Solomon wrote that in his backslidden state. Hello? But if you live and die like that, that is vanity. So if you stop at the spiritual birth, you will make heaven. But when you are born or you give birth to yourself, in addition to these two categories of births, then that will make you achieve your optimal heights. And you arrive at your own position in destiny. Bishop, you get position for destiny. And nobody can occupy it. May you not die leaving that position empty. Yeah. Yeah. Said that is when you are conscious of your biological birth. You are conscious about it. You know the opportunity there. You know the limitations it's set. You are not satisfied. You know what is possible by your spiritual birth. And you will not take nonsense from life. But you will rather rise to challenge life, challenge situations, and then make situations bow for you. That is when you are giving birth to yourself. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It will take serious actions. And it is only few Christians that do arrive. Some of us will just end it at that spiritual bath. And you leave your life in the hands of God. Your life is in the hands of God. Fine. And then when, when you get married, every night you see the woman beautiful. And all the features that God has created, you are not attracted. God, my life is in your hands. Some of us know how to go to that extent. But on some other issues of life, we are waiting for God to act. We are waiting for God to act. We are waiting for God to act. Is anybody listening to me? I hope I'm not talking to the wrong set of people. People that have ears to hear. I hope those are the people I'm talking to. People that have eyes to see. Yes, people that have minds to receive. Yes. 
Listen to me. The good life is more than wearing good dresses. The good life is more than looking good. You see some people, they are looking good. But nothing is good in their life. Oh. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, the good life is more than wearing dresses. There are some people that are covering some tears with good dresses. They only pretend by the kind of dresses they wear. Inside that dresses, they are sweating. Inside that sweating, inside that dresses, they are actually shedding tears. So it is not just in wearing good dresses. You can be looking good and be climbing or cutter all over the places. For goodness sake, your life is not good. Not bothered about whatever anybody has to say about this. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You can be dressing well and be residing in a suburb where you reign as a do. See some people, even back in days we were in the village. But we're not dressing well. We even fly our polo. And we make guy. And on the motor code. Timo, Timo Fay, Timo Red, Timo in the motto. Even in our poverty. I intentionally made my shorts to be tight. And you will always see something at the back of my pocket. Either I put a pocket dictionary there or I put a comb there. <laughs> and I was one of the poorest in the class. Was that a good life? What is good about that? Somebody shall hallelujah. In your environment, everybody is telling you that you are looking good. But for goodness sake, you are not even sure of where the next meal is going to come from. So there is hunger within. I have a friend. He has moved out of the city now. He has moved into the jungle. If I mention his name, Oga Solomon, you know him very well. Your may also will know him. But when you see him dressed, he will show. You won't see. Uh, I don't know how to know him. He will shave very well. He will iron his suit. And then this kind of persons, by the time they get to a vehicle, they shine their, their shoe. The shoe is shining. But there is hunger with them. Hello, church. The good life is all encompassing. And it is available for you. You are looking good. You are dressing well at the same time. You are living in a good house, in the same, in good environment at the same time. You are driving good cars at the same time. You are having good food to eat at the same time. And you are having more than enough to share. And in peace of mind and in good health. That is good life. It is possible for you. Yeah. And until you arrive that, hello, don't rest. And this that I've, I'm telling you, you have to fight it out new. You don't fight it out. Not a motivational speaker. Good life does not just occur. It does not just happen. If time permits, I will show you from four examples. You know why it is so? Every form of birth is not easy. For those our mothers you know that biological birth is not easy. Hello? The child coming comes out by force. And every woman is in between life and death. The pain is always severe. And then the child that is coming is also struggling to come out. That's the way about this. And you are brought out of the womb of your mother by a separation from those things that attach you to the mother, like the placenta, like the umbilical cord, 
Somebody shout hallelujah. For the good life to come, you must separate yourself from all the terrible things you are saying in your family. You cannot continue to go and kill. See, when an exercise, when a child is still in the womb, it is only by faith you give the child name. What is the child called? Huh? Fetus. No name. Why? No identity. Until you are separated from what you met in the house. No name for you. In destiny, no identity for you. Say here. Hear. Even if you don't agree, shall I say you here? So at spiritual birth, you are separated from the world. To start a new life that will ultimately lead you to heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. There's a separation. So at self-rebirth, you must consciously move out of the crowd and be different. And be different. As a matter of fact, you are permitted to be better than the best so far in your family. You are permitted to be better. To be better than the best. Receive that impartation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But you have to fight it out. Number one, Joseph was shown a dream that he was going to be the star child. Is anybody listening to me? Yes. What does that mean? That he has been released and separated from the rat race he met at home. He got the message, listen to me, oh, at age 17. You have to fight this thing out. Joseph got this message at age 17. Ezra! Ezra! The next stage was slavery. He had the dream. God showed him the dream. But he faced slavery. Now listen to me. If the man did not discover himself, separate himself, he would have died as a slave. How? By going to sleep with the ogre. Or God's wife. Thinking that that was an opportunity. Chopping the same food that the guy was chopping. He would have thought it was an enjoyment. There are some people now that are in slavery and they are enjoying it. They are enjoying it. But the man refused. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh my God. Some people are angry. I said, somebody shout hallelujah. And the next state was prison. Doing what? When he got himself to the prison, or when he got to the prison, he differentiated himself, sir. He differentiated himself. He was doing something that nobody else was doing. Even the chief prisoner or the warder, if they had warders in their days, could not do what Joseph was doing. He was not helping people to interpret dream. He was doing something that separated him. I've been put in cell before. Consciously or unconsciously, I was doing something that was different from what everybody else was doing. I became their pastor. To the extent that when I finish preaching to them in the morning, they will separate a place for me. And they will ask me, what do I want to eat? And they never allowed me to help them wash the toilet. I found myself in the cell and I told them that look at me very well. That I am a miracle going somewhere to happen. I moved from there, I happened. I only slept off. Look at me very well. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it, whether you hate me, whether you don't hate me, whether whatever, I will happen again. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, if Joseph had operated like a normal prisoner, he may have died in prison. He only got to the palace at age 30. After overcoming slavery and imprisonment. But as far as I'm concerned, he did not achieve all. He died in a strange land. 
It didn't die the way we would have wanted to. It had success, but not a complete one. Somebody shout hallelujah. The children of the children of Joseph were part of those that started the journey into slavery. His children. Atakuru Wonuado. He died in freedom, but his children died in slavery. Where you are seated, I want you to begin to pray for yourself. I refuse to hand over poverty to my children. If you believe it, pray it for yourself. I refuse. I will not hand over bondage and slavery to my children. I will enjoy life. And my children will enjoy far more than me. Pray for them. The height I might not be able to attain in life. Very early, my children will surpass that high. Even very early. Breaking down at the point of breakthrough. I put a stop to it in my life. Breaking down at the point of breakthrough. I put a stop to it in the life of my children. I launch my children into the realm of higher life. And those of you that are not even married, pray that prayer. Your children are already in your loins. They are already part of you. I launch me and my children into the, into the realm of prosperity forever, 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 forever. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. That is how to fight it. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Stretch your hands towards the altar. You will not hand over poverty to your children. Yeah. With you, the yoke of that limitation is broken. Yeah. You will enjoy. Your children will enjoy. Yeah. Your children, children will enjoy. Yeah. Generations after you will enjoy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. If you get to a certain age and begin to live by what your children contribute to you, you are not a successful parent. I do not see a day by the grace of God that my children will not be the one that will be contributing. No. God will bless them they will have to give me, not because they see lack in me. See, Femi, are you listening to me? My expectation is that my child can come to me and say, Daddy, I want to start a business. How much do you need? Three billion naira. How much do you need? I need three billion. How much do you have? I have 3.5. It's okay. But then take two billion, add it, make it bigger. Who else do you want to meet to make this project work? That is how a parent behaves. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jephthah became the released among his brethren. But listen to you. Ah, the problem we have is that we don't read the Bible well enough. They first of all pushed him out. Eh? When they pushed him out, it became popular among the non entities, among the commoners. You see it? Now, 
Listen, you know, they only went to beg him to come and help them in war. He gave them condition. How was he sure that he was going to win the war? Was he everybody that goes to battle that comes back? Ha! Huh. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jephthah fought the war. He became the leader, but he ended it with a daughter and only child. With his daughter. Yes, sir. What kind of leadership is that? Somebody will tell you that that was a success. He won the war. But he lost his only daughter. He lost his entire generation. Nobody to take after. Nobody to bear his name again. You have to fight it too. I want to where you are seated. Total success is my portion. I want you to declare it for yourself. I will reign in life. In the name of Jesus. Now listen. Say after me. I shall succeed with my wife. I shall succeed with my wife. I shall succeed with my children. I shall succeed with all my body parts intact. Turn into prayers. When the prosperity comes, you will not lose your husband. When the prosperity comes, I will not lose my wife. When the prosperity comes, when the greatness comes, I will not lose any of my children. I shall succeed with my wife. I shall succeed with my children with me. I shall succeed with all my body parts intact. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we are prayed. So shall it be to you. I said so shall it be unto you. In the name of Jesus. Number three. Now listen. David was anointed king at age 14. Bishop, you didn't hear me so. Age 14. Did he get to the palace? He was carrying the anointing. It was not a Babylonian that is not a pastor that anointed him. I said, was it not the day that Saul was anointed that he became the king? Hello? You need to fight out. He didn't become the king. After he was anointed, I sense it that he probably eventually went back to the bush. And began to follow animals as he used to do before he was anointed the king. At age 17, three years after, he was anointed the king. That was when he killed Goliath. And how did he even get there? Somebody that was anointed king, separated. The same brethren that stood until he was brought and he was anointed, he eventually be the one that was carrying food to go and give them. May the anointing of God on you not be wasted. May it not tarry. May it not be delayed. This anointing on you shall become effective, shall come to reality. Amen. If you believe it, shout a louder, amen. amen. Now listen to me. At that age 17, he killed Goliath, but it was Saul that took the glory. Saul was the king. He was not the king. May you not labor for others to eat. The same soul was running mad. The man that was anointed was not the one playing the harp to get him 
healed. <laughs> Hello? The palace that was supposed to be for him, somebody was occupying it. And the person occupying it now became sick. They now called you that was supposed to be occupying the palace to come and be healing him. Does it make sense to you? Now listen to me. After helping Saul, that same Saul now began to look for him to kill. Do you think that all the prayers we read in Psalms, they just came for the fun of it? You thought that the thing just came like that? If it did not battle it, the anointing on him can become a waste. If he did not pray all those prayers, fighting it out, Saul would have killed him. He would have had the record that he was anointed, but he never became king. Why? David later became the king. But at first, only over Judah. Before he now became, and as a king for his entire kingship, he never had rest. It was war. War. Hello? I've written here, it is good to have meat when there is teeth, strong enough to chew it. It is good to have shoes when there is strong enough leg to wear them. I want you to, to say after me, where you are seated, every brick wall assigned against my imagines at the top, I pull you down, turn into prayers. Every brick, every brick wall, every brick wall that has been assigned to set me back, that has been assigned to hinder me from imagining at the top. I put you down. Human war. I put you down. Spiritual war. I put you down. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Please say after me, I receive grace. I receive power. For early manifestation, for sustainable breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, turn into prayers. I will make it early. I will make it early. I will emerge early. I will emerge early. I will break through early. I shall succeed early. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, please say after me, my success shall not be truncated. Oh, you are turned into prayer. Every truncators of destiny in my lineage, I destroy your power over me. I want to go shadow your logo. I want to go to go I want body to go. Die. My success shall not be truncated. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Jacob got, to, got the promises of God. Either by counterfeit or genuine method. And he became the chosen. But what? He couldn't stay in his father's house. In any way. Esther, when you lose your position in your father's house, is it in the father's house of another person that you become the authority? No wonder when he got to the house of Laban, he became like a servant. When he was the one pushing all the animals all over the places, where were the children of Laban? And you know what? His destiny now began to work for Laban. And the man was able to observe that since the day that Jacob got to his house, things changed. Now, what he ought to be using for himself, another person strategically was collected. The man so suffered. 
People look at the four wives that he had as success. But by the time he got to Egypt, in his own, with his own mouth, he told Pharaoh, my age has not been like that of my progenitors. But what I passed through and the challenges, why he got there bent? What, bet, what got him bent? Situations and circumstances. It is not all about carrying the promises of God. It is in you fighting it out. He was already bent and couldn't enjoy the best of life anymore when his child was enthroned. His son was like the vice president. There was no dress you can put on a bent man that will have fitting. The man was already bent. Aruna, you are, you are at the age when whatever you wear can fit you. When you started shaking like this, they now put gold shoe on your feet. You know if you even carry. When they now bought limousine and put you at the back, and they put air condition so that you will not feel hot, you said you will be complaining. Stretch your hands towards the altar. You will not die before the manifestation of your glory. I want you to shout it for yourself. I shall witness the glory of my children in good health. I shall not shed tears over any of my children. Turn into prayers. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. We have to run up now. How do you fight it out? How do you fight it out? Never be discouraged. No matter what you are passing through, never say anything negative against God. Never be tired. Don't weep. When the devil sees you weeping, he laughs. He's happy. Don't hiss. Never blame God. Never ask God questions. Because God is never to be blamed for anything. If there is anyone to blame, it is you. Number two, midnight prayers. Very important. Hello. The day you slept, or the day you sleep at 12, and you didn't at 10 or 11, and you didn't wake up 12, you didn't wake up 1, you didn't wake up 2, you didn't wake up 3, you didn't wake up 4, you didn't wake up 5, to pray, you have wasted your time. It's a useless sleep. You are not fighting anything. Exodus chapter 11, verse 4. Moses said, Thus said the Lord, about midnight. Why didn't God call me in the afternoon? About midnight will I go into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. Midnight. Number three, fasting. This kind goeth not forth, except by what? Fasting. Then number four, spiritual consciousness and alert. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because who? Who is he? Adversary. What does he do? What is he doing? It is consciousness and alertness. Then pray always in the spirit. Look, I, I saw on the Facebook the other day where they gathered set of children together and they were committing them to pray in tongues for 12 hours. Eyes up on your feet. What we are committing our children to do is to make noise during service.
the kingdom work. Kingdom work. The more you do it. Look, I said, I said, I don't know. God is not a debtor. God is what? A rewarder. But you have to be diligent. What is the problem that I've seen with people? You are doing this for God. You are not consistent with it. Get, maybe because somebody like me, the way I talk to you, you got angry. Ha! Why will you allow me to get you angry? Wale, don't let me get you angry out of the plan of God for your life. Oh. Because I can get somebody angry. You get it? But you are working for God. Am I the one you are working for? Why are you looking to encourage you? Even when I say what is not, when I do what is not, you look away from me because you are not serving me. You are serving God. I allowed what a pastor did to push me out of the church. God did not tell me not to go out to he allowed me to. He was watching me. And the devil came. Everything that I thought I had that could make me say that, why is it? I lost everything. But to God be the glory, is a restorer. He doesn't hate. What God does is to close his eyes and be looking at you. Kingdom walk. If you will need anybody to encourage you to work for God, may success not elude you. It's as simple as that. Just working for him alone. Just working for him alone. It will now gather all those things together and reward you. And reward you. And reward you. And reward you. I said this church was not established so that I can become a pastor. That is why I'm not a pastor. This church was established so that I will have an opportunity to do what? Serve God. That is why, as it is, you cannot drive me away from this church. Can you? Now, now, I cannot drive you. Are you coming to work for God? Or you are coming as a taker? You have to measure. It is not all about you being a member. There are people that are members, they are useless. I cannot be useless. Now, it is not by mouth. It is by acting it out. Some people swept here. Some people only came to sit on swept ground. Lift your hands to the heavens. Oh Lord, I take my future by faith. It shall manifest in the name of Jesus. Turn into prayers.